Hey there Twisters, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the Mike Ricci division of the ugliest jerseys of all time, hand selected by yours truly of course. Now if you haven't seen it already, be sure to check out my first video or my first bracket video where I break down the Bobby Clark division. So this will be the second of our four pieces of the bracket and then we'll have a final four at the end. Uh, hit the red subscribe button and the notifications bell down below if you haven't already so then that way you can keep up with, with the series and other videos that i'm uploading here on youtube okay so without further ado let's get into this remember this is just for fun subjective let me know which of these jerseys you think is the ugliest and should be moving on to the final four in those comments below okay friends let's go ahead and do this so we're starting out with the 2002 New York Islanders alternate going up against, I think, the 2011 New York Islanders alternate. This was totally selected at random, so it's cool to see these two going against each other this early. So we've got this orange alternate here with these really weird kind of inlet crop, this cropping that I just think is the weirdest thing on the planet. Or is the uh, bland Islanders text the uh, most weird thing on the planet? Because Look at this right here. It's like almost a basketball jersey. It's a black jersey, first of all. Okay, it's in the New York Mets color scheme. I can kind of get behind that, but then you got these gray shoulders here. I don't remember the Islanders ever really using gray. You got the logos on the shoulders. They, they at least have that. But because you don't really have any real logo on the front, and that text is really generic, I'm gonna go with the 2011 Islanders here. Next up, I cannot believe we have this in the first round. The 1995 Anaheim Ducks Wild Wing, <laughs> Mighty Ducks, excuse me, and the 2003 Dallas Stars, the Mooterous alternate. So, I, I don't know, this is gonna be really difficult. Let's start with the Wild Wing here. So, you've got this insane graphic of, uh, you know, a duck from the TV show, essentially, jumping out of this ice, and you got ice all over the place. You've got these really cartoony looking numbers that are kind of hard to read, I must say. And yeah, this thing only lasts for one season. So it's it's atrocious, don't get me wrong. The good thing though is that at least it kind of fits into the Mighty Ducks uh, family, right? It's got the right colors. It's got the, you know, the duck with the wild wing. I mean, that's at least somewhat consistent there. And then you got the two uh, logos on the shoulders there. As for the stars, you got red in this color scheme and it looks like you spilled tomato paste all over it. You've got a bowl, a constellation design, which is kind of neat. Granted, we do know that this looks uh, like something else, right? You've got the Anna, or you got the Dallas star kind of uh, on the right side of the logo as we're looking at it. It's atrocious, nonetheless. It, it doesn't look like a Dallas Stars jersey, necessarily. It's cer certainly not like something they would wear today. But just because of the absurdity of that duck, and just how busy it is, and how illegible it is, I'll go with moving the ducks to the second round. That's, that's not easy, either. Okay, next round, we've got the Columbus Blue Jackets, 2000, so their inaugural season, against the 2010 New York Rangers alternate. So, Columbus here, this is their original logo. Kinda, I mean, you can, it's legible enough, but you kinda have to look at it for a little while. You got the Stinger logo on the shoulders. I do not like that whatsoever, but the rest of it seems fine to me. The New York Rangers, again, this doesn't look like, you know, a disaster of a jersey by any means. But the New York text is pretty bland, and considering their previous alternate that they had introduced was the Statue of Liberty, this is very underwhelming. So, given that, I'm going to move the Rangers into the next round. Columbus, definitely not an attractive jersey by any means, but with New York, it's like, well, what's, what's the difference between that and your typical uni, right? You just put New York instead of Rangers there, and the color is a little bit darker. So that, to me, is pretty... Uh, I don't know, uninspiring, so that's gonna go to the next round. Now we've got the 67 Maple Leafs against the 2000 Calgary Flames Flaming Horse here. So, I picked this Toronto jersey because it was the ugliest of the Leaf designs in my opinion, and yeah, other than that, of course the jersey itself is fine, but I just had to pick 
you know, one per team, one jersey per team at least. And so I, that's why I got this Toronto one on here. Calgary, I actually like the horse head. I think that's kind of a cool graphic. But given that they actually made this their home logo at one point, their home jersey, that's why it's on this list. So Toronto, you have, you know, a similar look and feel. It's just the logo that's a little bit different. Whereas Calgary, you have totally abandoned, well, I mean, it's on the shoulders now, but you've abandoned the main C and there's no reason to really do that. Nonetheless, or and additionally, this, uh, the waist design and the sleeve design, I don't like. And Calgary is no longer wearing red at home. So for those reasons, I'm going to move the horse head into the next round. Now we've got the 2003 Phoenix Coyotes and the 1980 LA Kings. So for the Coyotes, this is the first jersey they had after they moved on from the Kachina. And for the Kings, this is a different design than what they wore in the 60s and 70s. So Phoenix, I've got this on here because the logo was fine, rebranding that, I guess. But it's pretty bland, right? It's just this desert red as I like to call it. Some people call it burgundy, but I call it desert red or canyon red. And it's kind of overkill. I wish they would have had like a, that sand color. I wish they would have integrated that into the jersey some more. And considering they have red pants, it's just kind of just kind of bland. You know, they had Kachina. They had a unique design there and now they're going with a unique color, but they're not doing much with it. Whereas the Kings, they at least have those unique colors still going strongly for them. I'm not a huge fan of the crown logo itself, but you know, some people would actually like to see that come back. I don't like the vertical striping on the Kings, but they're not the first team to do that, even though I don't like the look of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and go with the Coyotes here. I think it's bland and just not very fun to look at, at least not for a whole game. Then we've got the 1945 Maple Leafs against the 2018 Pittsburgh Penguins alternate. So I selected this version of the Leafs because, again, as much as I like the actual jersey, the logo on the blue jersey has red text, and that just looks really wrong. As for the pens, I don't like this because I do not like the cropping of the shoulders and the arms. It looks kind of like a tank top. I know some other jerseys do, do that, but when you have yellow and black, which contrast pretty well, it stands out even more. I like the numbers on the shoulders. I think that that's fine. I don't like this, the sleeve striping either. I don't know, this, this one's tough because here the Penguins deviated a little bit from a design they used in the 80s. And here the Leafs kept the same thing, but they just made things a little bit different with the text. So really, when you look at this Penguins, although I don't like it, at least it's somewhere in that family of jerseys and something that can kind of be adopted. Whereas with the Leafs here, it was the one jersey they wore on the road, I guess. And it's uh, it's just kind of disastrous seeing that text in red. Honestly, from, from kind of a pure standpoint, I'm gonna go with the Leafs to move into the next round. Now we've got the 1930 Detroit Falcons, which became the Red Wings, against the 2018 Winnipeg Jets alternate. So I chose the Falcons because, well, first of all, the Red Wings don't really have many ugly jerseys or none that I could really say is ugly. And this one, you just have the text. You don't have an actual logo. They're not the only team that did that at the time, but they had that gold colored, uh, you know, outlining to the actual letters there. And I wasn't uh, a particular fan of that when you, when you combine that with just the classic Red Wings, red and white. So yeah, I just don't think that it's really doing too much in, in that sense. Um, and then the Jets, I like the script logo, it looks fine, but you don't have anything on the shoulders and you're not incorporating any colors uh, besides blue and light blue. You know, it's not like they're, they're using any silver there. Um, so it's it's plain, it's too plain for me. So that's why I picked that as the, the lone Jets jersey. So between these two, there's a reason why the Falcons had to move on and go to the Red Wings because they just didn't have that brand identity set. So, you know what? By slim margin, I'm gonna go ahead and pick the Detroit Falcons. And then our last matchup for the first round here, we've got the 07 Washington Capitals against the 2018 Oilers alternate. So the Caps, I'll put them on this list because I don't like that white sleeve striping there. 
Um, and I don't really care for the piping, but that's kind of uh, evident with that era. Um, I like the shoulder logo, that's good. And the logo, th they returned to form here. They went back to their kind of, uh, you know, classic logo and made a couple small alterations there. So it's kind of like a new take on their classic jersey, but I like the classic jersey so much more. Edmonton here though, they got this monochromatic logo, which I think is kind of fun to look at, but it's not great for the jersey because the jersey other than that, is just this dark blue phantom of a jersey. There's, I mean, the, the orange is a good color, don't get me wrong, but I just don't think that that really, those two really complement each other well without any, any white. So, just because of its kind of generic appearance, well, both of them, you could really argue that. At least the Capitals have that sweet eagle on the on the shoulders there. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move the Oilers into the next round. Okay, go ahead and take a look at the updated bracket for a moment. And now we're going to go ahead and move to the second round here. We're going to start with the 2003 Phoenix Coyotes against the 2011 New York Islanders alternate. So. So I was saying earlier, kind of a bland uh, color scheme there and a bland jersey design for the Coyotes. But then again, you know, maybe they were just responding to fans saying, well, look, this Kachina thing, I know what you're trying to do, but the execution's kind of weird. It's just kind of a weird logo. Uh, it's not very uh, translatable. We can't really put it on smaller formats. I'm just kind of spitballing here. And then with the Islanders, again, there really is no logo there. You're abandoning the blue on the front, which you know, you could have, you've tried orange before, it didn't work. So now you're going with black and then you got these gray shoulders up there. So trying to be the Nets, you're trying to be the, the Mets. And yeah, that's just a complete failure in my opinion. So here at least, you know, the Coyotes have a logo, you know, not the best, but certainly not the worst. You know, the numbers seem that they're fine. I like the shoulder logos. The Islanders though, just a, a crappy color scheme. I don't, Think that this looks all that great honestly the you know the, when you have black and blue and orange like that i don't know just purely based on my opinion i don't like that the islanders are going to go to the next round now we've got the detroit falcons of 1930 versus the new york rangers of 2010 looking at their alternate there so the falcons and rangers here neither of them actually have like a real logo detroit they're deviating with their color scheme a little bit there but you know, I actually don't mind the stripe design, at least it's fairly interesting. I know that that time it was used a little bit. Whereas the Rangers here, they're just, uh, you know, just taking their, their current jersey and uh, the text isn't stylized. And I know that they haven't always used the stylized text, but here it's just not that interesting. And you know, their previous alternate was much more interesting. It was totally unique, the Statue of Liberty there. And so with that said, just because of how boring it was at the time, and it wasn't exactly just the same kind of jersey that other teams were doing like it was for the Falcons. I'm putting the Rangers in the next round. Now we've got the 1945 Toronto Maple Leafs against the 1995 Anaheim Ducks. This one isn't hard for me because let's look at it this way. At the end of the day, it's still the Maple Leafs logo. It's still the Maple Leafs jersey, right? You just altered the color of the text. Whereas here with the Ducks, you have, well, you still have the Anaheim Mighty Ducks uh, patches on the shoulders there. But this is just taking it way, way too far. There's too much going on here. It's too cartoony. The numbers aren't even legible. So the Ducks go to the next round, definitely. And there, here we've got the 2019 Edmonton Oilers alternate going up against the battle. It's the Battle of Alberta, first of all. And they're going up against the 2000 Calgary Flames Horsehead. So here we've got the Oilers, just two colors. Not much of a design, honestly. Nothing really fun or interesting. Um, you know, you're wearing orange at home, and I think that's more interesting than this jersey, definitely. And then Calgary, you have abandoned your beautiful logo, and you've abandoned wearing red at home. So, mmm. You know, it's not the best of designs either. I, I think the horse looks kind of cool. You know, at least Calgary's trying to do something different here, while Edmonton is just giving us dark blue jersey with a bright splotchy logo <sighs> logos calgary's got them beat design wise i'm gonna say they're about the same because i don't like either of them calgary's at least got the c's on the shoulders though what did the oilers have you know i'm only rating i'm only rating the jersey not the whole uniform either 
So I actually like the collar here. Well, the collar for both seems okay. But at least at the end of the day, Calgary's is more interesting. It's more interesting, they still have the C's on the shoulder there. Edmonton has rid themselves of the classic blue and orange. I'm putting Edmonton into the next round. Okay, so now we're in round three. Look at the updated bracket there, and we'll jump to our next matchup. So we got the Battle of New York. So Rangers versus Islanders, okay? Now, when looking at these two matchups, this one and the next one, I see it this way, all right? You have this hodgepodge of a disaster on one side, and you have this conservative, but presentable at least, despite being kind of bland, design for the other side. So in this case, you know, the way I look at it, if I'm playing for this team, the Rangers gave me that alternate and they might've been hyping it up and say, hey, we got a, a classic kind of heritage jersey. And then they give me this one. I'm like, damn, that's it, you know? They're like, yeah, we're gonna do uh, team photos. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll put it on, that's fine. Whereas with the Islanders, this is the reason why John Tavares left the team. He's like, no way, I have to be with a team that at least has a jersey that I want to put on because I can't see myself wearing this anymore. And so that's why I'm going to move the Islanders into the next round because at the end of the day, the players, they look at that and they're like, oh, hell no. A similar thing for the Ducks of 95 and the Oilers of this current era. So the Ducks, look at that. Do you think they want to put that on? They're like, hey, I definitely want my kid to have this, that's great. But they don't want to be, you know, going out there trying to score goals, you know? They don't want to be you know, trying to block shots wearing that thing. I mean, it's ugly enough having to wear that before you get a puck in the face. The Oilers, as much as I don't like this, at least you can put it on and play a game in it without anybody, you know, stopping you in your tracks and saying, you look like a complete idiot out there. So with that said, the Ducks move into the final round here for this division. So that's going to pit us with the 1995 Mighty Ducks going up against the New York Islanders of 2011. Now with the Ducks, again, way too cartoony. You got way too much going on on the front. You still have your, your logos on the shoulders. You still have your colors. And the Islanders still have colors and they're also kind of paying homage to other teams in the region, which is kind of cool. Some people call this Ducks one the ugliest of all time. And I can certainly understand why. But at the end of the day, it's it's having some fun. Most definitely, it's having some fun. Is it is it a fun jersey? Yeah, it's a total disaster, but at least it's fun. We go we look back on this jersey and say, wow, it was a disaster, but you know what? The team needs to bring that back for some warm-ups, you know, auction those jerseys off, and you know, people want to go out and collect it. Do people want to go out and collect this Islanders jersey? Well, certainly not me. I definitely don't, I don't think that people are ever going to remember it in a way that's kind of nostalgic, as ugly as the Ducks one is, there's kind of a, an aura, a, a, an element of, you know, fun to it almost. You can almost keep producing merchandise with that sort of look on it. I bet it would sell okay. The Islanders though, this is entirely forgettable. This is ugly in the worst way possible. So the winner of the Mike Ricci division is the 2011 Islanders alternate. I can't back down from it. Anyway, I know that you guys are gonna have different opinions. Let me know in the comments below. Be respectful, please. And yeah, tune in for the rest of the series. We got two more divisions to show, and then we've got a final four coming up. I hope that you're enjoying this series, and if you are, make sure thumbs up. I'd certainly appreciate that. And stick around because we've got more madness ahead of us. All right, guys, this has been Nick with Twisted Rister Hockey. I thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you around soon.